Okay, Vita Sala, where are you? Don't just run away, you coward. Okay. Oh, they all just died. Wait, there's someone behind me. Oh. Ein Bull died. Ouch! Oh, I, I should not stand near the bombs. Oops! <laughs> Oh god. Cole! I'll protect you. Ouch! Holy moly. Well... Everyone's dead. Ah, time to revive them. Mm. Where is... Okay. Holy crap, they just all died. Instantly. Let the bombs explode. Oh, they don't explode. Jeez, okay. This guy is so annoying. Everyone? Come on, I will protect you. No, go! Go! Here we go. Oh no! I'm so sorry, everyone. <laughs> I did not pay attention to my focus. Ugh. That was bad. Everyone got injured. No. Ouch. I hate you all. Die already.
Okay, they can't penetrate my barrier using their long range attacks. God, I'm so sick of those guys, honestly. Die already, oh god. Spawning? Please don't tell me they're respawning. Do I have to do something? Like what about this mirror? Do I need to go in there? Oh god, okay. Damned mirrors has to lead out of here. Are we just wait, trial and error? Okay, I didn't know we could enter through mirrors while we're fighting. Here we go. Oh, that is so satisfying. Everyone, the enemy is defeated. There's an alluvian here, but we cannot enter through it. Did she go already? Oh my god, this looks like an arena. Aha! I knew it. Whoa! Where's my focus? Oh god! Ouch! Oh god, what is that? Mines? Whoa! No, 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 get out! God, demons! Wait. Ouch. Oh God. Dorian. Wait, Cole. God. 
Boy, the demons are gone. Where's Cole? Cole! Cole! God. Wait, it, it its attacks are affecting the demons as well. Ah. Holy crap, I don't Oh god A despair demon Oh wow, okay, what happened He's invulnerable Use your mark My mark What is happening? I don't know. Oh God! My march! Everyone's dead, by the way. Oh God, I'm dead. You can't hurt him, but the fade can. Okay, let's do it again. Maybe I was standing too far away. Okay. Holy crap. Has it ended? Where are my teammates? Um... For some reasons my teammates are showing um, on the top left. Everyone okay? No, I'm alone! What happened here? They were turned into stone? Ebesit kata etwa ost. Solas? Your forces have failed. Leave now and tell the Canari to trouble me no further. Solas? Solus. That should give us more time. I suspect you have questions. How did you do that? How were you able to control the anchor? In the same way as when I stopped it from killing you at Haven. Although I am stronger now, the mark you bear was bestowed upon you by the orb of Fen Harel. My orb. Your Fen Harel. 
I was soulless first. Fen Harel came later. An insult I took as a badge of pride. The Dread Wolf inspired hope in my friends and fear in my enemies. Not unlike Inquisitor, I suppose. You also know the burden of a title that all but replaces your name. What? Attack him? What? Wait, you're like Mithal then? Are you a fragment of what Fen Harel once was? Like Mithal? No. This is all I have ever been. And the legends? I sought to set my people free from slavery to would-be gods. I broke the chains of all who wished to join me. The false gods called me Fen Harel, and when they finally went too far, I formed the veil and banished them forever. Thus I freed the elven people, and in so doing, destroyed their world. Mm. Wait, the veil destroyed the world? How did creating the veil destroy the world? You saw the remains of Via Dathara. The library was intrinsically tied to the Fade, and the veil destroyed it. There were countless other marvels, all dependent on the presence of the Fade. All destroyed. Your legends are half right. We were immortal. It was not the arrival of humans that caused us to begin aging. It's the creation of the veil? The veil took everything from the elves. Even themselves. Why did you form the veil? You said to... Um, deprive the false gods of their powers. You love the Fade. Why would you create the veil to hide it all away? Because every alternative was worse. Meaning? Had I not created the veil, the Evanuris would have destroyed the entire world. The... The Elven gods... How did the gods go too far? You said that the Elven gods went too far. What did they do that made you move against them? They killed Mithal. <laughs> a crime for which an eternity of torment is the only fitting punishment. I thought Mithal was one of the Evanuris. She was the best of them. She cared for her people. She protected them. She was a voice of reason. And in their lust for power, they killed her. The Elven Gods aren't dead? You banished the False Gods. You didn't kill them. You met Mithal, did you not? The first of my people do not die so easily. The Evanuris are banished forever, paying the ultimate price for their misdeeds. Hmm, what do you mean by the banished forever? Banished where? Somewhere in the Fate where they can't get out or something? How did they become gods? The Evanuris were elven mages. How did they come to be remembered as gods? Slowly. It started with a war. War breeds fear. Fear breeds a desire for simplicity. Good and evil, right and wrong, chains of command. After the war ended, generals became respected elders. Then kings. Finally, gods. The Avenuris. Hmm. What happens now? That's the past. What about the future? I lay in dark and dreaming sleep while countless wars and ages passed. I woke still weak a year before I joined you. My people fell for what I did to strike the Avenuris down. But still, some hope remains for restoration. I will save the Elven people, even if it means this world must die. What does that mean? This world must die. Why is that necessary? Why does this world have to die for the Elves to return? A good question, but not one I will answer. You have always shown a thoughtfulness I respected. It would be too easy to tell you too much. I am not Corypheus. I take no joy in this. 
but the return of my people means the end of yours. It is my fight. You should be more concerned about the Inquisition, your Inquisition. In stopping the Dragon's Breath, you have prevented an invasion by Canari forces. With luck, they will return their focus to Devinter. That should give you a few years of relative peace. So you can destroy everything? What? <laughs> what? You want to destroy the world? Like, including all the elves in it to save... Save what exactly? Uh, what do you mean? Why should I be concerned? I should be concerned. He's trying to de destroy the world. What's wrong with the Inquisition? You created a powerful organization. And now it suffers the inevitable fate of such. Betrayal and corruption. It's not that simple. Do you know how I discovered the Canari plot? The plot I disrupted by leading them to your doorstep. The Canari spies in the Inquisition tripped over my spies in the Inquisition. The elven guard who led you to the Canari body? Who intercepted the servant with the Gatlock barrel? Mine. Okay. Yes, thanks. Why did you help? Why bother disrupting the Canari plot if you're going to destroy the world regardless? Yeah! You have shown me that there is value in this world, Inquisitor. I take no joy in what I must do. Until that day comes, I would see those recovering from the breach free of the Kune. Why? Because I am not a monster. If they must die, I would rather they die in comfort. In any event, it is done. Wow, okay, that's generous of you, I guess. You set us both up? So you let us do your dirty work. The mistake was yours to fix, Inquisitor. Is it really my Inquisitor? What is this? <laughs> what? what is this question? The Canari said the Inquisition was unknowingly working for agents of Fen Harel. I gave no orders. You led us to Skyhold. Corypheus should have died unlocking my orb. When he survived, my plans were thrown into chaos. When you survived, I saw the Inquisition as the best hope this world had of stopping him. And you needed a home. Hence, Skyhold. Mm-hmm. You gave him your orb? You gave your orb to Corypheus? Not directly. My agents allowed the Venatori to locate it. The orb had built up magical energy while I lay unconscious for millennia. I was not powerful enough to open it. The plan was for Corypheus to unlock it, and for the resulting explosion to kill him. Then I would claim the orb. I did not foresee a Devinter Magister having learned the secret of effective immortality. Learn the secret of effective immortality. Hmm. So I guess it kind of differs from the elven immortality back in the days. What was meant to happen? What would have happened if Corypheus had died and you had recovered the orb? I would have entered the Fade using the mark you now bear. Then I would have torn down the veil. As this world burned in the raw chaos, I would have restored the world of my time. The world of the Elves. Restored the world of my time. But then the evil gods return. If you destroyed the veil, wouldn't the false gods be freed? I had plans. Truly. I never thought of you as someone who would do that, Solus. Thank you. You must understand. I awoke in a world where the veil had blocked most people's conscious connection to the Fade. It was like walking through a world of tranquil. We aren't even people to you. Not at first. You showed me that I was wrong. Again. That does not make what must come next any easier. <sighs> so we were pawns. You never cared about us. We were the means to an end. You were people, and you deserved better. 
like all the rest I've used in one hopeless battle after another. Illuvians? Why are we asking about the Illuvians? You control the Illuvians now. Yes. You remember Briala from Halam Shiral? For a time, she controlled part of the labyrinth. Oh! One of my agents was supposed to take it from her, but he did not succeed. I had to override the magic personally. The Canaris stumbled upon this section independently. With them gone, the Illuvians are now mine. And what about my mark? Can you transfer it to you or something? There's still the matter of the anchor. It's getting worse. Yes, I'm sorry. And we are almost out of time. Oh, great. The mark will eventually kill you. Throwing you here gave me the chance to save you. At least for now. The Inquisition will try to convince Solas to change his plan. Or the Inquisition will stop Solas even if it means killing him. Oh, I do wish we could change his plan. Would that even work? You don't need to destroy this world. I'll prove it to you. I would treasure the chance to be wrong once again, my friend. Take my hand. I'm sorry. Live well, while time remains. Something must be done, but we cannot lose the Inquisition now. We stand on the brink of war with the Canari. Yes, because this Solas provoked them in the first place. The Inquisition did not cause this threat. We informed the summit of the danger. The danger posed by Canari spies inside your organization. Everything's falling apart. Without our organization, you would not be alive to complain. <sighs> no one has forgotten what you have done. But Corypheus is two years dead. If the Inquisition is to continue, it must do so as a legitimate organization, not a glorified mercenary band. What happened to my head? Inquisitor. Oh my god. Um, efforts against Solas will be stronger but risk corruption. What does that mean? Efforts against Solas will be weaker but more secure. Inquisition will be disbanded. We need more oversight. We will keep the peace. Uh, I mean, more oversight seems like a good compromise between what Ferelden wants. But what is gonna... <laughs> what if I say we will keep the peace? What's that gonna do? We serve the divine, not you? Hmm. That's just making them angry. Hmm. We will keep the peace. I don't want to bow before them. Hmm. You all know what this is. A writ from Divine Justinia authorizing the formation of the Inquisition. We pledge to close the breach, find those responsible, and restore order, with or without anyone's approval. I'm proud to say we accomplished that goal. We will honor the sacrifices of those who gave their lives in defense of what we stood for. 
and still stand for. Because our work is not done. Where we led in war, we will now serve in peace. The Inquisition will act as Divine Victoria's personal honor guard. Answering directly to her, we will transition from a military force into a peacekeeping organization. My own adventuring days may be done, but the Inquisition and its mission will continue. Wait, what happened to my hand? <laughs> Did I chop off my hand? Everyone. Oh, Varric's latest book. Over the next several months, the Inquisition carefully gave over many of the duties it had held. As the Divine's personal guard and peacekeeping force, the Inquisition shrank to a more manageable size. Many who had served went home, though the remaining force was still enough to give pause to any who might threaten the Divine's plans. Those who served the new Inquisition were tested and checked thoroughly in the hope of ferreting out any more spies within its ranks. With the dragon's breath disrupted and any hope of a swift victory dashed, the Kunari retreated back to the north. Few knew what debates were waged in Par Volen, but not long after the Exalted Council, the Kunari launched new attacks against Tevinter. Their aggression caught the already unstable Imperium off guard. Tevinter was soon mired in a war many feared could spread across Thedas. The Exalted Council remained intact, advising Divine Victoria on important matters. Cassandra served for several years. While she often disagreed with Liliana's policies, the former right and left hands of the Divine shared a mutual respect and worked well together. Cassandra also spent time in the Hunterhorn Mountains north of Olay, where she worked to rebuild the Seekers. For a time, the new Seekers remained reclusive, showing no interest in worldly affairs and working to a purpose few outside their order could guess. The end of the Inquisition as it had been sent shockwaves through the College of Enchanters. Madame de Fer ably played on the Mage's fears. Her followers united to build a new circle, with Vivienne as its Grand Enchanter, in direct competition with the College. What the Circle lacked in numbers, they made up for in political connections. Soon they were a force to be reckoned with. The two institutions settled into an uneasy coexistence across the South, vying for power.
After the exalted council, Liliana devoted herself fully to the sunburst throne and her dream of reshaping the Chantry. Within a year, she removed restrictions surrounding Chantry priesthood, allowing men and women of all races to be initiated and ordained. This decree was followed swiftly by her decision to return the Canticle of Shatan to the canonical chant, a move that divided Andrastians deeply. A rebellion to renounce her and return the Chantry to its former state arose, beginning first in Olay, then spreading to other parts in Thedas. As quickly as it began, the rebellion faltered. While most agreed that the rebellion collapsed due to infighting, some whispered that the Divine herself engineered its failure. The rebellion fractured into a number of separate cells, some of which limped on for several months before disappearing into obscurity. Sarah left the Inquisition with scarcely more ties than when she began, disappearing back into her confusing weave of favors and friends. After seeing the world brought to the brink of er by arrogance and pride, it was a blessing to return to normal, however strange a normal it might be. With frequent visits to her widow, of course. What? Widow? Exploding beasts? Wait, was that Scout Harding? Perhaps most unnerving was Sarah's standing offer to the Divine. Well, nee, no, 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 Dagna, that was Dagna, right? When the knobs piss about with your left hand or right, call on Red Jenny to give them two fingers. Varric returned to Kirkwall, where, as Viscount, he resumed his work rebuilding the damaged city infrastructure. Under his rule, the city-state finally resumed its place as the major trade hub of the Free Marches. He continued to ignore all mail from both the Merchant's Guild and the Prince of Sarkhaven. With the Inquisition in its new role, the Bull's Chargers returned to taking jobs throughout Orlais and Ferelden. Fighting demons and clearing out the remains of venatory forces, the Iron Bull did his part to restore order to Thedas. After the Inquisition transitioned to a peacekeeping role, Cullen continued to serve as commander of its forces. Under his leadership, the Inquisition protected the Divine's interests while enforcing new standards of security. Cullen also expanded the Chantry's treatment for Templars, whose minds were taken by Lyrium, as well as those who wished to seize Lyrium usage. And as chaos reigned in the north and threats to the Divine lurked in every shadow, Cullen remained ready to serve. Dorian returned to Tevinter to take his father's place in the Magisterium.
As rumors flew about the Imperium's infighting, Doran was spoken of often as a voice of resistance against corruption. Along with Magister Mervaris Tilani, he formed a group called the Lucerni to restore and redeem Tevinter, a fight many thought hopeless. Those fighting by Magister Parvus' side noted that he kept in constant communication with the Inquisitor via message crystals. Oh, that's what they were, a communication device. Whether for vital information or for moral support, these talks seemed to give Dorian the strength to continue his fight. Tom Grenier was shown, shown mercy where none was deserved, and set on a path of redemption. This gift, so compassionately given, needed to be shared. Freed from his obligations to the Inquisition, Renier traveled Thedas, giving hope to the condemned and the forgotten. In the deepest prisons and pits of Thedas, he found, if not goodness itself, its potential. By showing faith in those who had none, Grenier lifted them up and made them into something better than they were. After easing the Inquisition's transition into the Chantry, Josephine returned to Antiva and her family. Thanks to the Inquisitor's help, the Montiliers were once again permitted to trade in Orlais. The next few years were a busy time, as many ships with the Montelier crest were built and set sail again from Antiva's harbors. Soon, Raveni pirate captains with an ancient feud against Josephine's ancestors took to the seas, determined to rekindle the rivalry. Apart from Josephine's sister, Yvette, Nearly eloping with a dashing pirate prince on one occasion, Lady Montelier took the development in stride. Cole returned to the Fade, saying that there was more pain coming, and that he knew where compassion would be most needed. He promised that his friends in the Inquisition would remember him, and that where the hurt was greatest, he would help. After the events at the Winter Palace, elves left the Inquisition under mysterious circumstances, as did elven servants across Thedas. None could say where they went, but those who believed the Inquisitor's story about Fenharel wondered just how large the Dreadwolf's forces were, and what the ancient elven rebel had planned. My agents have found nothing. With the Illuvians, he could be anywhere. Maintaining the Inquisition, even as a peacekeeping force, leaves us vulnerable to agents of the Dragon. Why are we in our fancy clothes? It also gives us the strength to respond. <sighs> we will need to be careful. Solus knows everything about us. Who we are, how we work, our strengths and weaknesses. Then we find people he doesn't know. We will save our friend from himself, if we can.
Ooh, okay, that was it. Wow, that's set up perfectly for the upcoming game. The, the new game, Dragon Age Dreadwolf, where Solas will be the antagonist, apparently. Holy crap, and now we know why he, or how he turned quote-unquote evil. Somehow he wants to destroy the world to bring the ancient oven back or something something. I mean, what the heck? Why, why does he have to destroy the world to get that? Uh, he really should help the, the elves that are like living right now, right? The elven servants in Tevinta and the Dalish elves, of course. Okay, the DLC certainly answered some of the questions, but also like raised a couple more questions that we don't know any answer to. Uh, I am I am so excited for the new game now. Now that I played this, I now know why everyone's been like really upset when there are new when there were no news about a new Dragon Age game coming up. Now I understand. When did this game came out first? I think it's been like more than 10 years ago, right? And people have been waiting for the sequel like more than 10 years. That's crazy. And it's not even clear when Dreadwolf will be published or if it will be published even. Hmm. But I can already say if it gets published, I will definitely play it. Oh. Cassandra? Oh, Mac, that is a terrible title. What are you even thinking? Don't tell me that's the book about me. <laughs> All this shit is weird. Varric could have come up with a more badass name. The sky churned like a rolling sea on a dark and stormy night, centered on a gaping hole that led to the ass end of nowhere. <laughs> a hole that spit up many things that day. Comets, demons, and a whole lot of trouble. Can you please stop writing whole? It's about the Inquisition. Oh, Cassandra. <laughs> Cassandra is so excited about this book. The din of the tavern cut the silence like it owed the carter money. In the middle, in her element, Red Jenny. She looked me up and down. Mostly down. Oh God! Not playing, weirdy. She said, gesturing with and dismissively eating a sandwich. Don't write that. Seriously, piss up a rope. Sarah made the subtext text, which suited me fine. Enchanter swirled into the room like a drop of beautiful poison spreading in a wine glass. She sized me up with a glance. I'm so glad you made it, my dear, she said. I am Madame de Fair, <laughs> the most terrifying person you shall ever meet. I love Cassandra's impersonations. Oh god, is there more? Liliane enfolded Alphonse in an embrace as warm as a serpent's kiss. Alphonse? I always knew I could count on your support. The Count did not feel the bite of her poisoned dart until it was oh. too late. Even if it requires your death. <gasps> Holy crap, Liliana. Drops of rain glistened 
hand on the griffin medallion grasped tightly in Blackwall's hand. The silverite wings of valor, they mean nothing. He flung the medal to the cold and uncaring ground. You don't know what I've done. You don't know me. <sighs> so romantic. <laughs> what was romantic about that? Oh, Cassandra's accent was on point. Cole moved like a shadow that also moved like a knife. A shadow wearing a hat where dreams came to die. It's a riddle, he whispered. A cold riddle that gnaws at your mind, but you'll feel better when it's gone. That makes as much sense as anything Cole says. Okay, I think with this... I mean, it's clear I've enjoyed this DLC, so no more comments there. Do you place your herald above the law, Ambassador? Whose law, my lady? Josephine's eyes glittered like angry opals. The law destroyed by rebellion, by civil war, by poor fiscal management. We are the law. So with this, I will sign off. I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope to see you in one of my future Let's Plays, and thanks for watching till the end. Bye! We left our mark on Adamant, but the dust hadn't settled, and neither had Harding. I can offer you a drink, if I catch your meaning. If you caught my meaning, you'd have offered a double. What is even happening here? Iron Bull was a great slab of muscle with horns that could hang a tapestry. One eye scanned for threats, while the other hid behind an eye patch like a Chantry sister's old sins. Come on, he barked, not looking back as he entered. The dancer with the great rack comes on in five. That is spot on, actually. Commander had the look of a Templar who had seen the worst of humanity, yet still had the time to style his hair. This isn't just a war, he said, his gaze steely like a dull blade. It's the only war. Cullen! That's Cullen! wore a class of handsome sneer cultivated by a thousand years of Tevinter elitism. The name's Dorian, he glared. D-O-R-I-A-N. Spell it right, you marble-headed lump, or it's toad time. A toad? That's hardly credible. Elf spun, mage staff crackling like the city after a good man's murder. You're crazy, the Red Templar cried in terror. Moonlight glinted off ears like the knives you never see coming. Better to fade out than burn away. Ugh, Varric. Wait, where am I? I don't... Oh, here it is. The Seeker clutched at my vest, her tears as desperate as they were pitiful. Varric, I was wrong about everything, she sobbed. Could you find it in your noble heart to forgive me? That dwarf, he... he... he put me in the book! <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the book! I am reading the shit out of this! I thought she was gonna kill him. 